What's going on, EPW Nation? It's your boys from the Everything College Basketball Podcast, Josh and Peyton, here to remind you all that college basketball season is right around the corner. Yes, we finally know it's right around the corner, and Peyton, there's only one place people should go for all the college basketball excitement. Well, Josh, the only place to find all college basketball hoops all the time is Everything College Basketball. Everything College Basketball can be listened to on several podcast hosting sites like Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. And we can also be found on our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Everything College Basketball. Yes, make sure you are joining the group with a, a couple other hundred people and growing by the day as we march into year number three of the Everything College Basketball networking system. Now, let's get back to Conrad and everything pro wrestling. Blame me for why we're late. It doesn't matter. Show's still happening. It's still going to be good. Happy WWE 2K13 day. I know a lot of you are in New Zealand right now using those, those nice smart brains that you have to play WWE 2K23 early. And I'm hoping you're here for a little palate cleanser before Monday Night Raw. You've got me. You got the homie Sean representing Hubbard Wrestling Weekly, Conrad representing everything pro wrestling. We've got an intro for you. We got a lot of shilling to do. And we got a lot of wrestling to talk about, so make sure you keep it strapped in with your boys and Clash of the Podcast. Nothing better than some classic old school video game sounds to uh, start the evening off right. Sean, how are you, sir? What's going on, my brother? I'm feeling good, man. Went to the dentist, no cavities, man. You know what I'm saying? Felt like a 13-year-old kid again, like worrying about the dentist, but it turned out to be a beautiful thing. Um, Work was cool. You know what I'm saying? Just grinding it out. Happy to be here with you, my brother. Much respect, much respect. Speaking of the dentist, next week's episode of Clash of the Podcast will be a little preempted. It won't be at 6.05 live because guess who has to go to the dentist next week? This guy. It's crazy how this worked out, bro. Like That was complete coincidence. Yeah, but you set me up nicely with that. That was just he threw the softball. Bam! Home run right there. So listen, next week we're probably going to go live, I'm guessing, around 7, but it's going to be a shorter show. What we're going to talk about, we will uh, leave that up for discussion today. Sean set you up with a nice show. I'm not even going to front. Like, I can't even take – I have zero credit in how this show was set up, but Sean hooked it up for you guys. Uh, Speaking of the hookup, you know who's got the hookup when it comes to pro wrestling? Our boys at Fight TV. Fight TV's got some good wrestling coming up. We've got the uh, Lucha Libre World Cup. This looks tremendous. Uh, If you're fans of people like the names Vampiro, uh, Josh Alexander, and you see many, many names from the AAA promotion on there. Uh, You even have, I don't know what John Morris's name is there, but uh, I'm sure it's something cool. Christopher Daniels, Camille, Deanna Perrazzo. People from all over the world are going to be at this. You guys are going to want to check it out. And it's only live on Fight. That's where you're going to want to be to check it out. Impact Wrestling has some good shows coming up. We got Sacrifice coming up on March 24th at 8 p.m. Fight's got you covered. Impact Plus got you covered. Make sure you guys are there and checking that out as well. Uh, Mickey James Jordan Grace is the match I am most interested in. But we also have Time Machine. Sean's favorite, uh, Kushida and the Motor City Machine Guns versus Josh Alexander, Rich Swan, and Frankie Kazarian. Assured to be a banger. And Tommy Dreamer versus Bully Ray in what they are dubbing a busted open match. Oh my God. I'm not sure what that means. Sound, I know sounds exactly east. What it means. 
Sounds ECW-esque. Yeah. They've also got uh, Multiverse. Now, this is where people are going to meet from uh, New Japan Strong and Impact Wrestling. Bullet Club, new tag team champs. I'm digging it. Uh, Chris Bay, Ace Austin, Aussie Open. You also have uh, the Mighty Don't Kneel, if you're ever wondering what TMDK stands for, and Motor City Machine Guns. They got some bangers coming up and announced today. Mickey James, Deanna Perrazzo, Giselle Shaw, and Mayu Yamashita will be all going in a four-way match against each other for the Knockouts World Championship. Banger. And things to look forward to, Sunday, April 16th, we got Rebellion. Josh Alexander versus Steve Macklin. More on that to come, though, if you're an Impact fan. Uh, Sean, I know I know you got some stuff to show, too, before we get into our uh, the meat and potatoes of the show today. Yeah, real quick. One more thing about fight is that, you know, they really enhance the WrestleMania week experience. Um, you know, obviously the 16th is after WrestleMania. There's a couple of events before WrestleMania. But that, that, that event that's coming up on WrestleMania week to Thursday before WrestleMania, what a great way to start off um, to start off your WrestleMania weekend. It's really exciting. Um, you know, myself and Conrad are locked in. Big shout out to Fight TV and their staff over there. So make sure you look out for that. Um, the new Hubbard Wrestling Weekly merchandise is really selling well. I'm actually dumbfounded with how well it's selling. I appreciate this. Um, got my new I Don't Believe in Luck, I Believe in Blessings t-shirt. It's really, really nice. And I am very happy to talk about. No, put to take that off the screen, bro. Take that off the screen. We're not talking about that. Take that off the screen, bro. We're not doing that today. We're talking about my everything pro wrestling merchandise for all the people out there. Make sure you get that everything rest pro wrestling merchandise, man. I got my cup today. I'm a coffee guy. So big shout out to Conrad and his. He's Hubble Wrestling. He's not the only one with the merch on Smash. Um, Conrad did it first, and he's doing it great. So I got my EPW merch. Some more is on the way. Hint, hint. Watch out for them sales, Conrad. They're going up. And uh, I'm excited, man. We got a lot of stuff going on. Make sure you check out both links, both channels, both stores, because, uh, you know, we appreciate the support, and we appreciate being with you guys every week. They're, they're down in the description, too, for anybody who wants to check them out. But every holiday – um, I would always just go on there and check. Don't like, listen, we're trying to save you money on these. Even That's go on, get yourself something that you need. And then you can go in there. You're repping the brand. He's got coffee mugs. There's stickers. There's t-shirts. You can buy pillows. You can do whatever you want. Go ahead. Look, look at him. He proud. Show it. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty excited about this. Got the, got the sticker on the, uh, on the on the the Kindle, you know what I'm saying? It's it's exciting, man. I, I say this humbly, you know what I'm saying. Conrad knows a lot of things that I've been through and and the struggle of trying to put this thing together. So, you know what I'm saying. And to see it selling, you know what I'm saying. If you're in this chat and you bought one of my shirts or any of my merchandise, I appreciate you, um, because the numbers are a lot higher than I thought they would be. So I'm really thankful. And do us a favor too. Uh, if you have something like that, send, tag us in a tweet at EPW Show at Hubbard Wrestling, Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. Tag us in it, man. We'll retweet that, man. We'll show love, like most definitely. So make sure we want to see that stuff. That's the best stuff to uh, see. Let's give some shout outs to the chat here, real quick, and then we'll get into this. Shout out to my nephew, Knowledge, in the house. What's going on, right. nephew? I right. see you out here. Better be doing your homework and uh, you better be balling. All right. I haven't seen any basketball videos. Send me some. All right. Uh, Doug's in the house. He said, hey, yo, 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 Papa Roly, and check your 40. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. <laughs> uh, Bring it to Joel. you. Joel, what's good? What's uh, good? Uh, Sean covering for me in the chat as well as I see it. So thank you, my brother, once again. Um, let's see here. Matt Lopez says, hello, everyone. Good evening. What's going on, Matt? What is good? Sir Quills, he says, what it do, everybody? Conrad, Sean, what's up? Yeah, let's get ready for another dope episode of Clash of the Podcast. Much appreciate appreciated. you, Quills. Appreciate you. Um, guy Will Gamble, also in the house. What's good, Guy? Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. BJ in the house as well. What's up, BJ? BJ Live. Uh, Rob in the house. Rob is the one who made that design that you saw in the coffee mug, so you got to give him full props. He big said, I'm on Yeah, big shout out to Rob. Big shout out to McKinney. I saw the, the, the ads on um on a couple of social media platforms. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate that, man, for real. <laughs> Guy said the intro theme feel like Luger's about to get cheated out of the championship. Come on. But, what type, not, not, but the U.S. championship. I'm thinking U.S. championship. He's going to lose it to, like, you know, Arn Anderson or something. Yeah. <laughs> for life, brother. I got you, dude. 
Uh, I legit thought, <laughs> Conrad, when you mentioned the dentist and next week that you were going to say Isaac Yankum DDS, yo, no, no, we will not have him on the show at all, for sure. Uh, yo, I'm here to talk wrestling and let y'all know Chris Rock dropped eight minutes and 43 seconds of facts. Oh, you I'm sure not did. getting into that. You sure I'm not did. getting into that. Uh, somebody said, was that Carlito? Points, yes. Yes, points to Motor City. Um, Impact is so good. I think Impact is very slept on. If you haven't given it a chance for a while, hey, give it a chance. Uh, I bet Jordan Gray's bench press is John Gresham before bed. Come on now. Come on now. Gresham, they're both in incredible shape. I can't front. I can't front. Uh, Impact's going to have some dope matches the next couple weeks. They got to take advantage of the momentum. When you get the momentum... You got to take advantage of it. You keep pushing. Uh, someone said, NES throwback. Yes, yes. <laughs> and Rob put, he knows what I'm yelling at him. Rob, get back to work. And you better come get that uh, that thing I sent you a picture of last night. Sister's waiting. All right. Uh, let's see here. Exactly. He's about to use the, the U.S. belt to Barry Windham. Barry Windham, even better. Nice. Nice gamble. Nice. I love Barry Windham, bro. He's one of my like silent heroes of wrestling. He doesn't get enough love, I think, for how good he was. He was so good. He was he so was. good. Uh, can we start off with this, I guess? Oh, wait. And shout out to Positively E in the chat. Always got to show E some love. He says, Scott Demore is Impact president now. That is true. Breaking news today as well. Impact's making moves. I'm telling you, you got to watch it. The Widowmaker. I, I got mad cards of those when he said the WWF cards back in the day. Listen, I'm going to let Sean talk about this first. Only because I have no clue what this man's going to say. Actually, no, I do have a clue. Bray Wyatt news. I don't know if you had a chance to get on the socials today, but this has been a hot topic of discussion, Sean. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's To me, it's much to do about nothing. I understand he's going to be off the scene for a while. Is that what's going on? I guess. I don't know. His whole comeback has been weird. Listen, th- you know what? I'm going to get mad for a second. Now I'm getting offended. And this isn't at you're any gonna, of you guys. You're going to get mad? No, I'm not, a, not of this. But how many weeks have me and Sean been on now? Episode 28. So 28 weeks, right? You've been listening to us, I would hope. We've been telling you since we started this journey, dog. How many times Triple H has not been doing the job we thought he was going to do? Vince is back in the chair, we believe. Look at what is happening. What is going? Bobby Lashley and Bray Wyatt makes no sense. And what is this doing for Bobby Lashley? Who's get who's getting made from this? I'm sorry. You can't cover this up with be patient, wait. What are we doing here? And I keep telling y'all, he's this close to Dolph Ziggler level with me. And that's the, I don't care anymore what you do. I can hear, here to show the world, new number one contender. I don't care. Right. I don't know how you feel, Sean. No, I mean, I, I feel probably the exact same way. Not necessarily about Dolph Ziggler. I'm still holding out hope from 2014. How pathetic is that? But um, but at the end of the day, no, it, it's, it's been really, really sad. Um, You know, I think that Bray Wyatt, um, the, the buzz of him returning has been, um, amazing, but I think it's gone downhill ever since. And, bro, like, I mean, we don't know who Uncle Howdy is, even though we do know who Uncle Howdy is, kind of, kind of, sort of. But for me, and now there's a chance he'll be off the scene again. WWE is clearly being run by Vince McMahon again, and it's it's quite apparent. And it's really a shame because, you know, people like Bray Wyatt, who had so much momentum, you know, that it all started for me, you know, with the the lackluster, um, you know, reveal of Uncle Howdy, which still hasn't happened yet because they're taking too much time with it. The flirting as it relates to Alexa Bliss, which never came to fruition. And now, you know, possibly being off the scene again, it's really a waste. It's a waste. And that ridiculous match that he had at Royal Rumble um, with LA Knight, even though LA Knight is starting to get over, which I'm really happy about that ridiculous. I think that's because of you, I still will watch that. Video. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, that ridiculous match he had at Royal Rumble, not because LA Knight was in it, because LA Knight is awesome, but the the gimmick, the gimmickness of that match, if that's a word, just just pathetic, bro. It's been a, it's been a major disappointment in my book. Yeah, um, Matt Lopez brings up a good thing here. He says that the news is confusing. Some saying he's off of mania due to creative differences, but Feifel says uh, there's a physical reason to why uh, it's been undisclosed for some amount of time. Hey, it, like, listen, if that's why he's out, 
fine and dandy, but I'm telling you guys something now, too, that's going to come up after Mania on this show, more than likely. We're going to be talking about Vince McMahon and them trying to sell the company. Is this real, or is this just a facade for all of us to believe, or is he actually about to sell to someone, get paid, and then we're going to have to see the fallout from it? Like I said, I think they're going to get through Mania first, but trust me, we're not done talking about the Vince McMahon saga. Uh... People are saying, speak your truth. Uh, That song about Bobby was hilarious. I think they're referring to the muscle man dance. I think that's what it is, but it made no sense. McKinney. McKinney, McKinney, McKinney. (laughs) He said, I'm not even mad if it doesn't happen. Had a spark when you started, but now you just garbage in my whole voice. Mm -hmm. Dang. Uh, No doubt I'm happy to see the return of Bray Wyatt, but his return has been underwhelming. What a complete understatement, man. Yeah. Uncle Howdy's the new gobbly gooker. Yeesh. Yeesh. It's not that we don't know who he is. It's do we even care anymore at this point? At this point, yeah. we, I mean, when it when it gets revealed, the whole luster of who Uncle Howdy is, is it's almost dead to me now, bro. It's Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Why I fell off the rails of that Mountain Dew Black Light match? Mm-hmm. It's tough, man, out here. Uh, I'm not going to say that Vince is in charge, but I bet he told Triple H to just look closer. Nah, nah. Raw has completely went back to what it was. It, it's back to two- to three-minute matches. The only difference is that they switched the people around. That's yep. it. Yep. Uh, Pro Wrestling Shoot in the house. What's going on? They got a giveaway, actually, tonight for WWE 2K23. You may want to check out their channel before Raw. We'll be done here by that time, but head on over to the Pro Wrestling Shoot and show them some love. Connor in the house. Conrad, Sean, what up, my brothers? Connor, what's going on, man? Uh, demand that ain't snug. That's stiff. Or, or, excuse me, demand. I said demand. <laughs> demand. Listen, Sean, let's get into uh, your first first topic, man. We're going to be talking a little bit of that uh, let's get Uzi. <laughs> We're going to be talking a little Roman Reigns. Yeah, Set man. I mean, um, I'm, I'm really excited about about that. That's pretty much the only thing I'm excited about as it, as it, uh, as it relates to WrestleMania. And Sounds WrestleMania. like the rest of the WWE. Anytime, yo, anytime someone's like, WWE's from a storytelling standpoint, I'm like, take out the bloodline and tell me what Mad Cat Moss is doing right now. Facts. Facts. But this is a great story, though. 100%. It is. It is. Um, I still, I will forever say that WWE dropped the ball because you had a ready made, you had a ready, they didn't even have to do any work, bro. See, this is, this is what, and I'm not going to get deep into it. I'm going to take 30 seconds and I'm going to move on. Jay Uso was over. Jay Uso was over. Jay Uso, all they had to do was simply let it ride. Jay Uso was was primed and ready organically. WWE had Jay Uso in the bag organically as it relates to a main event spot, as it relates to going up against Roman Reigns and the bloodline. It happened organically, just like it happened organically with Sami Zayn. Okay. Anybody who says that Jay Uso turning on the bloodline is less interesting than KO and Sammy reuniting to face the Usos is is just wrong. And I say that respectfully. Is Sammy and KO versus the Usos going to be an awesome match? Yes. We'll probably talk about it in five-star category. But you cannot tell me that that match as predictable as it is, and Conrad hit the nail on the head, and so did a lot of you guys, McKinney and many others, right? But you can't tell me that if Jay, if they just went with the ebb and flow of Jay organically turning on Roman Reigns and just said, okay, let's let this happen, that it wouldn't have been completely and totally awesome, right? But we're not going to get that. So now we have to deal with what we have now, which is now the bloodline putting their focus onto Cody Rhodes. So um, there's been a lot of rumors, Conrad. I don't know if you heard it, that this may not go exactly the way we think it's going to go. You know, this may not happen the way we think it's going to happen. I know we've heard rumors also about Roman Reigns taking a break. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to take a break right after WrestleMania. Maybe he's going to hold on to it for another month and lose it at Backlash or whatever the next pay-per-view is. I don't know what it is. But the bottom line is there's a lot of question marks as it relates to the future of the bloodline. And... For me, I feel like WWE, as usual, had something in the bag that they could have used, 
uh, to to prolong this. I'm talking about Jay versus Jay versus uh, Roman Reigns at the main event in SummerSlam, bro. That's where I was going with this. That's what it could have been. So listen, so listen you may have to you catch me up a little, little bit on this. Sure. Is there a chance that Jay Uso is still not fully with the bloodline? Because his explanation was, I did it for my brother once again. Mm-hmm. He didn't do it for Roman. So do th- f- you feel like the door's still open on your theory? Maybe they're just like, pause, we'll come back to this. I feel I'll like be- they did the same thing to Sammy, like, pause, we can come back to this. If you're still over after the fact, we can revisit this. I, I think the door's open a crack. Okay, if you remember us talking about um, Elimination Chamber and how Jay came back and and wasn't able to make a declaration of what side he was on because he got mistakenly speared by Sami Zayn, we said, okay, the door is still half open. I think that door has closed more now. Now, if WWE, (laughs) if WWE decides to let that sliver of hope turn into them kicking the door open, that would be a good idea. But you know what that means. <laughs> so so at the end of the day, that would be a great idea. Oh my God, Jay's back with the blood. Matter of fact, as I'm saying it, as you just put that in my brain, because I'm telling you, I didn't. we didn't talk about this in pre-production or anything. That's hilarious, oh my God. Um, <laughs> We didn't talk about this, but check this out, man. Check this out. Derek, I see you, brother. My man. Jay seemingly being back in the fold, okay? Jay seeming back in, back in the fold as the ambulance goes by my window. And all of a sudden, we get Jay going against the grain again and, and turning on the bloodline like I said he should from the beginning. What a great idea. How entertaining. How wonderful would that be? But it's WWE, and when WWE is presented with a good idea, you know what that means, bro. So I anticipate they're going to go the safe route. I anticipate they're going to be cowards, like I called them on my YouTube channel, that WWE are cowards when it comes to doing something like this. And I think they're going to stick to what they know, which is, okay, let's just have Sammy and Kevin Owens reunite with each other, and then the Usos will reunite with each other, and then they'll fight at WrestleMania. Instead of doing, doing something that people unexpected would, would like and be excited about. So, that being said, now we move on to Cody Rhodes and we have Roman Reigns. And we're not sure exactly what's going to happen with that either. Because this alleged vacation that Roman Reigns is going to take doesn't have to happen on WrestleMania Sunday. It doesn't have to be where he wrestles at WrestleMania and he's gone by Thursday. Maybe it takes an extra month. Because the entire world thinks Cody Rhodes is going to win. And I'm saying, pump your brakes. Maybe not. I'm with you on that. I think that there is a possibility in my mind right now that Cody loses. Do I think that he's going to lose if he gets a rematch? No. I think Cody's still going to get a title no matter what. I, maybe it won't be this one, but he's going to get a title. They owe Cody a title. I'm sure it's probably written in his contract that he's getting the championship at some point. But the Roman train is pretty hot. Let me let me just paint a picture, y'all. Please. I don't know if I said this Please. last week. Shout out, to, shout out to McKinney. You know what that means. Appreciate you, brother. Oh, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna get back to the comments in one second. <laughs> but when you when you think about this, let's just say Roman wins at WrestleMania. Follow me, y'all. You're cruising down that road to a thousand days of champ. Do you know when the thousandth day is? King and Queen of the Ring. Interesting. Imagine Roman Reigns sitting on the throne, getting a crown placed on his head, looking like Aquaman, sitting up there with both the belts. He's got everything, and it's the thousandth day. How how would people feel about that? Is that people are literally the thousandth day? I believe so. Wow, that's cool. Okay, that would be super dope though to sit there with all the belts, the crown, your family by you, the wise man, and you're just like, yo, I'm the best. Who can stop me? Maybe then you go and wait until Cody's gonna do it at uh at SummerSlam. That that that's how I can see it, man. You don't have to do it right away. Maybe Roman's taking time off for a different reason later on. Who knows? But you have what Sean's point is with that. I totally agree with. You have been desperate for stars for a long, long time. I don't care even if it's someone I don't like right now. WWE's in a bad place. 
you're in a bad place when you got people main event shows that I'm like, yo, who? Who is this? You're giving people opportunities. If someone's knocking out the park, you keep giving them opportunities. If people care about someone, you got to look at it at least and say, hey, there's something there. Let's and work I, with I, it. I, I appreciate you saying that, Conrad, because we don't agree on everything, but I appreciate you saying that. Is Jay Uso not over right now? If Jay Uso really turned on Roman Reigns, would that not be the talk of the wrestling world? I mean, am I missing something? No. No, you're you're right in that aspect to it. Like I said, I can present reasons why WWE would say no, but I also think what you're saying is correct, though. You're not coming sideways. Right. It's, yo, you need stars. Look at who the crowd's cheering for right now. Look at the reaction that Jay Uso's getting. Sami Zayn, push these guys. Gunther is another one. Look at the people that you have making the noise right now, and that's what they should do. Um, let me go back into some of these comments because some of these Jay Uso ones did have me laughing real quick here. Matt Lopez says if they committed to Jay Uso turning on the bloodline, it would have been a bigger deal and more impactful. Uh, positively, I, I, I've, been say, I've been saying that for months, brother. <laughs> Yo, E, you are terrible. The Bray Wyatt storyline will make total sense. Bray Wyatt. <laughs> wow. That's funny. Mad rude, bro. Mad rude. The fact that Jay only made his return about uh, his twin brother lets you know that this story is going to continue. And it started with Jay being tortured. It will end with Jay turning on Roman. Yo, McKinney. 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 That sounds like a good idea, bro. That sounds like a good idea. And I hope you know what? I'm going to switch it up. That sounds like a good idea. And I pray to God that you're right. But. I don't know. We'll see. Jay's loyalty. Yeah. Yeah. Roman's going to mollywop Jimmy if Jay didn't return. That is true. Uh, someone said Vince's howdy. Come on now. Come on now. Um, Conrad, did you pre-order WWE? Yes, I did, Eric. Uh, my brother got it for me actually as a birthday gift last month. He He surprised me. So... He he went on the PlayStation and bought it for me, but I have notifications that come through email. And I saw it, and I was like, yo, who bought this? Because it wasn't me, and I was definitely considering no. And my brother was like, oh, I got it for you, man. Don't It's on oh, me. Don't worry about it. I was like, that's that's dope. That's dope. So uh, it wouldn't shock me if Jay returned to the bloodline just to convince Jimmy and Solo they got to bounce. I, listen, I've heard rumors they got big plans for Solo. I, I don't think I don't think so. I've heard that rumor too. You're 100 percent accurate on your report, but I don't think Solo's ready. Not yet, but I'm saying they got it's in their head though. Like, yeah. yo, yeah. once he gets to mess around for a while, he'll be all right. Um, people are saying, why keep it on Roman? That's the king of the ring thing. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> wow. I didn't even get to these comments. King Roman in Saudi Arabia. I wouldn't put it past this company. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Terrible. Uh, this is your chance to make a star out of Cody. He's already a star. You let him main event Raw. He's a name. He's good to go. He, the thing he needs to fear is that he doesn't run into the John Cena monster that Austin Theory Ooh, met last week. Because that was yee, a little rough for Austin Theory, I thought. You can't tell people you don't care about someone. Conrad, I love it 100, but as I always said, Roman gets to 1K and drops the titles on his own like I'll be back again. Could be. Could be. Roman on the throne for a thousand days. Hashtag good idea. That needs to be Sean's new hashtag, I think. Hashtag good idea. You know what that means. <laughs> Gamble, I appreciate you, my G. <laughs> uh oh, someone said Solo's going to be Batista. He, They might be. They might be. Um, but I, I don't know. Is there is there any other meat to this Cody Roman thing? No, I think I, Sean brought up. For good. It's just I think we're putting too much stock, Conrad, and, I, and, and I'm including us in this. We we've been um, we've been um, susceptible to, to feeding into these things about this potential Roman Reigns vacation. Nothing is what it is until it is. Does that make any sense? Nothing is what it is until it is. We don't know if Roman's going on vacation. We don't know if that's official, and if it is official, we don't know when. I mean, Roman could win the champions, retain the championship at WrestleMania, and lose it the next night. Stop putting in your brain that it's a guarantee that Roman's going to lose the title to Cody Rhodes. Is Cody favored to win? Yes. But that doesn't mean we're talking about a man who's held the title for 37 years. There's no guarantees losing the title on, on in two weeks. That is true. Very true. 
the uh, the idea that he's losing, I'm not fully sold that it's going to happen, but I do think Cody's got to get this. Like I said, he didn't come over here for no reason. This is going to sound really bad, and you might say this is your AEW bias coming in. I don't really care right now. Cody had to be promised something to come in. He was the first, I'm, I'm using air quotes for those listening on the audio feeds, Benedict Arnold. Mm-hmm. When he came over, he turned on AEW. He turned his back. Mr. Ra, 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 come watch our pay-per-views. Ra, Ra, Ra. Now he's in interviews talking about he pirated the pay-per-view. Very nice, Cody, by the way. It, so he's doing that now. And it's like, how do you think people feel about that? So he did that. But in WWE, what is he What is he to them? Put the crown on his head. He's the guy. He's the one we're knighting to take over this place if, if someone's not here. If Roman's not here, he's the guy. They owe him a lot because he did that, because it made WWE not look weak in people's minds, and it weakened AEW, and that's what they want. That's the perception that they want. I'm trying to tell you guys to be smart wrestling fans. They did things to Jim Crockett Promotions and WCW that you would never imagine. Terrible things. And I know Bischoff did them right back, too, later on. But Vince McMahon is not a nice businessman. You can read his little sad letters from the Wrestling Observer in 1996 oh, I'm just a businessman and this big corporation's trying to hurt me and they're taking my wrestlers by using money. What do they do today? They're the exact same thing. So just peep game when it's happening. That's a fact. BJ commenting about the John Cena stuff from last week. Eddie Kingston would have slapped Cena backstage if he gave that promo to him. Yes, he would have. Yeah. Yeah, what'd you think about that? Quick thoughts on that, Sean. The theory promo, like, were you... Listen, I don't have this revisionist history of John Cena like other people do. Like, oh, I'm so happy he's back. I'm like, nah, I remember what you did to the Nexus, bro. I'm good. Hit the bricks, bro. I know you're nice to kids and you do all that goody-goody stuff. But I'm just like, what? that didn't help Austin Theory at all, what you just did last week. At all. And especially, there's a part of that promo that really rubbed me the wrong way. If you lose, you're done. If you win, you're done. That's... Ridiculous. Like, I, I, that's completely and totally ridiculous. Um, very disappointed in Cena, or if somebody told Cena to say that, very disappointed in them. It's okay to come out and roast the other guy. I'll, and we all like, uh, well, at least I can speak for myself, I, we all like um, reality based promos, but that was too far. I mean, Austin Theory needs all the help he can get, and you just really shut him down. Now, we'll. Theory probably win the match, yeah, but that whole if you win, you lose, and if you lose, you lose perspective really jacked it up for me. Yeah, and I didn't like that he was pretending, too. Let's not front like the night after WrestleMania hasn't been buns for quite a few years now. It's been like three or four years of trash, yes. Yeah, listen, I did a review last year, and I was like, never again will I sit here and watch the show the night after expecting some cool stuff, a raucous crowd. It was another Monday, bro. That's exactly how I'm treating it going forward, too, because they've given me no reason to care. It's not like after 29 or after 30 where the crowd was just the same people from the night before just going in. Yeah. So I get it. Um, uh, Quills was feeling Cena doing the roast. Uh, let's see here. Eric says, Queen Liv and King Gunther. What do you think? I could see those happening. I think that's a good I idea. Think, I think that would be cool. I still think for Queen of the Ring, though, and people are going to probably boo me for this, and I want to boo myself, I think Charlotte's going to be the first queen, though. I think they, she's going to be queen, too. But I'm glad you're saying you don't like it. I mean, I, I don't like it either, but it probably will happen. Yeah, if I'm a betting person, I would give it to Charlotte and Gunther right now for the people who need it. Uh, I need Solo versus Bronson Reed. Meaty men slapping meat. Mm-hmm. Big E would be proud of you for that. Oh, my goodness. Sean, them hashtags, bro. You got to – you gotta take those bro you gotta <laughs> you gotta borrow them uh at this point roman will lose the titles before fight forever comes out don't get me started on that news i don't even want to talk about that eddie kingston don't play uh vince stole mania from dusty and told pay-per-view providers not to air star <laughs> yeah that's that is true uh vince was so dirty the territory wanted to put him in cement shoes i have heard that story uh <laughs> you can hear more about that from a uh, good old jr uh, theory should have clapped back about uh, Cena becoming exactly what he said The Rock was. Yeah. Yeah. I actually just watched WrestleMania 28's match today, Sean. I had that on in the background while I was working today. Okay. Just nice. to typing, waiting. Yeah. And I was like, I was just watching that match. And I was like, yo, this was so good, kind of in a way back then. Like, just the build, the hype, everything around it. And 
he just and I was listening to the scene his promos and I was like, dude, he is the exact same person that he's yeah, hating on now. Serious. Just crazy. Crazy. Uh John Cena's burying people like that on the mic and behind the scenes. Unpopular opinion. In my mind, it was punk in the pipe bomb that killed the Nexus. Now nah, I don't agree with that. I don't, agree, I don't agree with that. Once someone kicked out of a DDT on concrete, I knew it was over. The Rock used to play the dozens that Cena. That was some Triple H, HBK, Mike Burial, for real, for real. Matt Lopez, come on, fam. Don't play with me right now. I ain't doing no Mania After Raw review. I'll do it if, if Sean does it. So maybe we'll get on late that night. It'll be a watch along, though. Sean's going to be on here with me till 11. I ain't doing that <laughs> by myself ever again. Nope. And Derek Bell last time, too? Never again. Never again. Um E going in about Vince's practices. And yeah, they are doing the pay-per-view near Memorial Day weekend to, you know, I, I'm sure they're not trying to hurt AEW, but that's what they're trying to do. Um moving on though. Speaking of that, let's get into some faction talk here with the bloodline. Sean, set yes, us up, yes, man. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm you know, obviously we know how successful the bloodline has been. And it got um uh, myself and Conrad to thinking, man. Stables with more than two people in it. You know what I'm saying? We were gonna because I mean to me, two people is a tag team, right? You need at least three people to be a faction. So where does the bloodline stack up to some of the all-time great factions? I don't think this is a conversation that many people have. People are starting to put Roman Reigns into that all-time great category from a singles perspective. But I think not enough people, and maybe we can get this conversation started have been talking about the bloodlines place in history as it relates to stables. So yeah, I mean, I think they've climbed the list. I mean, you ha- I mean, I think we kind of get a little bit drowned out by how corny WWE is as, as a whole, but from a bloodline standpoint, you have the longest reigning heavyweight champion in recent WWE history, right? And you have the longest reigning tag team champions in history. To me, that I mean, you add, you sprinkle in Paul Heyman, who many consider the greatest manager of all time. I don't, but I, I give that nod to Bobby Heenan. But I would put Paul Heyman up there on the list very high. Then you is, got, is your, hold on, hold on. I, I want to get in on that real quick. Is yeah. he like your number three at least? Four? Um. Top five. Let's do it. Nope, nope. He ain't getting out of this. Top five right now. We know Bobby's one. And I'm with you on that. I'm going we, – we can go back and forth right now. Number one, Bobby. Right. Bobby the Brain's number one for me. Who's two? I'd probably go – I'd probably go reluctantly, Jimmy Hart reluctantly because of longevity and championships. Um, but I, I'd i be hard-pressed to have him any lower than three. He's three. He's three at the lowest, Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman? I yeah, think three I at had the lowest. Cord- I think I had Cornette at two because I always wanted to see him get thrashed as a kid. Like, I always wanted to see him get beat up. Right. Uh, I think Heyman's probably three, but him and Paul Bear, I kind of always want to go back and forth on. And even then, I think you can make an argument for Heyman being two, but whatever. Paul Bear at four, and then number five, I would say, might be Jimmy Hart if I had to pick someone. You may not like me for this one, bro. I'm not really – I don't think Paul Bear was the – I, you know, respectfully, rest in peace. Paul Bear, I I don't see it, bro. Like – you found Percy Pringle too, though, because he he had to basically play that character to a T to be the under like talking like that the whole time and right. holding the urn and playing it off. I give him credit. I, for know, that. I, I think I'm fairly confident with this one. Let, let let's just go down the line. Bobby Heenan number one. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna throw it off off kilter. I'm gonna say Miss Elizabeth number two. Oh. Uh, see, I put her as valet. See, valet and manager are different because oh, Miss Elizabeth that? added to oh, the right. savage character to me. All right. Well, I'll put it like this. Bobby's undisputed number one, and Paul Heyman is definitely in the top five. There's Nobody can say there's four managers that are better than than 
definitively four managers that have been appointed. So, you know, Father James Mitchell. <laughs> no way. Who said that? Positively E. And I like Derek's answer. Derek says the top five managers of all time are Derek. Derek, you're fired. <laughs> what are you doing? Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. He said, Miss Elizabeth is Sister Sherry. I love Sherry Martell. Sherry, awesome. Sherry is one of my favorite managers, too. Or she, see, yeah, she was more of a manager because she got involved. We knew Miss Elizabeth wasn't getting involved, even when she was with Flair and WCW. Just might do an eye rake or something. That's about it. Elizabeth ain't getting all jacked up with that. She was getting paid. That's uh, Jimmy Hart. Yeah, oh, Bill Alfonso. I like Bill Alfonso in ECW. He was really good. Uh, D Money was good. He said, uh, I should I should have went with uh, Jay Uso and Sami Zayn versus the Bloodline. Yeah, listen, it could have happened. Doug said, join the Derek Order. Bobby the Brain Heenan was great. Bobby the Brain Heenan is my favorite of all time. J.J. Dillon, someone put. J.J. Dillon is good, Gamble. He's good, but the sample size is too small. J.J. only, I mean, the horsemen are probably top three greatest factions of all time, but he only managed the horsemen, you know, or Flair or the Andersons individually. J.J. doesn't have any kind of diverse history. I mean, Paul Heyman has a diverse history. Um, My God. I mean, people forget Bobby the Brain Heenan. I didn't think we're going to get into this, but sometimes the best subjects are impromptu subjects, right? You're right. Bobby Heenan not only was the manager of the Heenan family, Intercontinental Championships out the yin yang, Rick Rude, Mr. Perfect, right? He technically was the manager of Andre the Giant when he was WWE champion. The Colossal then, Connection. The Colossal Connection were world tag team champions. I mean, but you forget the Brain Busters, aka the Horsemen, were WWE tag team champions, right? But you forget Bobby the Brain Heenan was also the manager of the AWA heavyweight champion of the world, Nick Bockwinkle. I mean, Bobby the Brain. Nick. You need a dictionary to hear them promos. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, uh, big shout out to Positively E. I got to give Slick some credit too. Slick will go down as one of the most entertaining managers of all time. I love that guy. Um, But yeah, I wouldn't give it, shout out to Gamble. I wouldn't go with, I wouldn't go with, with, with JJ only because he was horseman and no one else. And also, another key element, I guess is the Bobby the Brain Heenan appreciation so, show. Bobby the Brain was the mouthpiece for a lot of his guys. Um, all due respect and rest in peace to Andre the Giant, he couldn't talk. All due respect and res- uh, all due respect to people like Haku, he couldn't talk, right? The Islanders couldn't really talk. I'm not saying that to be wrong. I'm saying it because I'm being honest with you. Um, in my opinion, the Red Rooster, before he turned babyface, couldn't really talk. Perfect. One of my favorite slaps in history. What about his, come here. Out of his mouth, right? Um, yeah, and then Brooklyn Brawler slammed him on that, right. that locker. So, so Bobby the Brain Heenan was the mouthpiece for a lot of his guys. J.J., back me up here if I'm, if I'm right and correct me if I'm wrong, Conrad. J.J. had flair. Flair could talk for himself. Arn could talk for himself. Tully could talk for himself. Maybe not. Maybe not Luger. Luger couldn't talk for himself. <laughs> but, it's the association, though. It's similar to CM Punk with Paul Heyman. Punk didn't need Paul Heyman at all, hundred exactly. percent. But it's the association with that manager. That's when you know you're at great level. Facts. So let's get back on track here. So yes, I, I, I to answer your initial question, yes, Paul Heyman is definitely a top five manager to ever live. So when you put all that. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying that, that that Haku, God bless him, he's a great he's a great worker, but he wasn't a talker, and 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 he had Bobby in it for that reason. But to get back to the focus of the conversation, the Bloodline should should start being talked about as one of the greatest factions of all time. I think they've earned that, okay? Because you got to think about it like this: if you consider Roman Reigns to be a top ten wrestler all time, right? And if you consider the Usos to be a top 10 tag team of all time, then you got to consider the the bloodline to be a top 10 faction of all time. How do you think they, how do you think they add up, bro? I mean, look, you're just looking at the man right here. This is Roman Reigns. He is a beast. He has more main events than John Cena now. I don't know if people have realized that. Actually, I think he has way more. I think Cena only had five. Right. Roman has just went through and crushed the game from 31 on. Like, this is just all Roman. 
He didn't main event 35, but he crushed all of these. And he's just right on top. Dig into this for me, bro. I'm really interested in hearing what you have to say. Where does the bloodline stack up all time as far as factions are concerned? I need people. You know what? Let's play. We're going to play a game. Let's let's have some people drop the uh, the names of factions in the chat and we'll kind of compare maybe for a second. Okay. And we can talk about them, too, while we're doing it. Uh, while people up here talking about King Haku and Haku is not a faction. Ming is not a faction. <laughs> he is who I'm taking, though, in any fight for sure in their in their prime. Um, let me see here. Uh Rob is bringing up some more managers still. I think some people are behind a little bit. If you're behind, you guys can hit live and then you can uh, jump into it. I know you might hear that later still, but some of you guys might be a little bit behind. But, yeah, I love the manager talk. That was really good. The first the first mention of a faction was X Factor. <laughs> Uh, I know some people. Some people like the X Factor. Uh, they had no hope, though. Uh, everybody. You know, funny about, you know what's funny about X Factor? They were the worst of all time. But you know what's funny about the X Factor? The X Factor had crazy, crazy titles on their resume, bro. E- Just incredible, former e- ECW World Champion, ECW World Television Champion, Albert, Intercontinental Champion, X Pac, European Light Heavyweight, Cruiserweight. It's like on paper, like they have a cr- pretty good resume, but they were trash, bro. They were so terrible. Um, yeah, but yes, this is were- awesome. Guys are, everybody's checking in. Let's 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 do this comparison. I think it's a great idea, Conrad. You go first, DX. DX. Um, so are, depends are on what you're better than D Generation X historically. Depends on which version of DX we're talking about, too, but. Uh, if we're just talking, I, I assume we're talking about the version that everyone appreciates the most, which is the Triple H, X Pac, China, New Age Outlaws version. Well, yeah, I'm, the five members, yeah. I'm still gonna go with the Bloodline is better Ooh. overall because of the fact that they were main event. That version of DX was like mid to upper card in a way. With right. all due respect, I mean, later on they were main event, but it wasn't the same at that point, though. I still think their peak was when they were feuding with the nation and all that. I mean, what do you say? I would say, I would say, Ness. <laughs> Ness. <laughs> I'm not, no, uh, um, I'm going to, I'm going to very reluctantly say, no, I love the bloodline. I can't give them the nod over DX. They were so revolutionary, but it's hard. That's a toss up, man. That's a great way to start out. That's a toss up. Let's let's go to this one. Evolution and the Four Horsemen. So I guess we can start with Evolution first. Evolution, I think, is a yes. I think Evolution is going to go down as one of the greatest factions of all time, and deservedly so. But I think that the bloodline has eclipsed Evolution. I think so. They've lasted longer too, didn't they? Evolution wasn't really together super long either. It wasn't a super long time. I, it was like two years, two years on and two off years. too. Two years on and off. Yeah. Yeah, because you got to remember there were injuries to Batista and Orton. Um, yeah. They yeah they made a lot of uh, a lot of slip ups with that, and I'm glad they didn't replace anybody in it. But yeah, Evolution was great, but it just wasn't my it wasn't my thing to put them above them. In this situation. Yeah, I'm not gonna give now four horsemen. I will never give the nod to. I love the bloodline, but I am not giving the nod to the bloodline over the horsemen. Favorite version of the horsemen, though. If I had to ask you, like, what are your favorite versions of them? My favorite version of the horsemen is gonna make you laugh because it's the version that lasted the least amount of time. My favorite horsemen were Ric yeah, Flair with the same garbage. <laughs> Prime Ric Flair. Double A, I guess it would be at the time, it would be uh, Oli. Was Oli? No, Oli was like the spokesman, wasn't he? Yeah, Oli he was, was the man. And then you had like Tully, and, and I, I'm going to give the not and Sting. That, to me, I thought that was a, a drop ball situation. Like Sting and the Horseman would have been freaking awesome, bro. If and he, he just was, didn't he was fall for the so Oli, though. He was a member for he was a member for a day or two days or a week or something. He had, he had a little bit of time in there until he wanted a title shot, and as it always yeah. works, you don't do that to Rick now. Okay, so, so let, me be, let me be more clear with you, bro. 
and for the chat as well. My favorite version of the Horseman is the one with Sting in it, but that's kind of a running joke because he didn't last long. So I'll be more real with you guys. I'll say my favorite version of the Horseman would be, um, obviously, Flair. I'll go... I'll go Tully, Arn, and Barry Windham. I think that's the strongest version. I have a soft spot, though, for Brian Pillman and Chris Benoit in the Four Horsemen, mm-hmm. too. I don't know why, but I love that version of them. And I even love when they added Dean Malenko into the fray. Now, Mongo, Mongo's great for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> great for all the wrong reasons. But the matches are painful to go back and watch. Ooh, ooh. I guess we got to bring up WCW guys, too. Dangerous yeah. Alliance. The Dangerous Alliance had no world champions, though. I mean, Rick Rude didn't become really, champion until really later. Really not true. We're talking about Rick Rude. Rick Rude didn't come become champion until later. Was it was it after the alliance? I thought he it won was, it right before. No, no, it was after. He was the he was the kingpin of the alliance, but he was the United States champion. You're right. You're right with Medusa. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Man, I'm getting old, man. Yo, we both are. We both are getting old. Man, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna be up there with the, they got the same issue that I got with DX a little bit. Like, ah, you're great, but you're when you're booked, you're here. You're not you're not here. Yeah, but okay. I love them. That's one of the best war games matches of all time. Dangerous Alliance versus Sting Squadron. Um, oh, NWO got brought up finally by Quills. Um, Some people think um, it's the greatest faction of all time. I'm going to say, and I'm really, you are gonna, you guys are going to be mad at me because I'm going to cop out and say, you know, what I'm going to say. I think the NWO is a yes, as in NWO is better than than um, the bloodline. bloodline. I'm going to take a stand. I'm going to take a stand because I was going to him and haw about it. I'm going to take a step further and just take a stand and say, yes, the bloodline is better than 1998 DX. I know that's a tough one, but I'm going to say yes. And then I'm also going to say yes about them being better than the Shield. I think the shield was amazing, but I think the bloodline has become better than them historically. See, I feel different with the shield because the shield was a great trio unit. Like you weren't beat like for months when those dudes were the three together, it was game over for anybody. They were getting beat up. They were beating main eventers. Like it was nothing like it could have been Cena, Danielson, Ryback. It didn't matter. The shields. I, I just think they're a slept on faction. Like same with it's dangerous. Alive. Like, I think they're great, but like, you know, I'm big on numbers. Okay. we talked about this off the air. We're talking about the fourth, the fourth longest WWE champion in the history of the business. And the longest reigning tag team champions ever, and a guy that we consider to be a top three manager ever. I mean, it's like that. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. There, I just love the Shield, man. They put on some banger matches. I think that they deserve a lot of credit for what they did there. Uh, what up, sick? I see you've joined us on Twitch. What is Bravo. good, brother? Um, Lashley just tweeted he don't care who he was facing. He worked too hard not to perform at Mania. Yikes. Uh, did Albert have some titles in Japan? I believe he was a tag team champion with like Tomko, wasn't he? He was. He was. I think so. Uh, let's compare them to WWE faction because the horsemen were on another level. Yeah, right now I think horsemen and NWO are the only two that were like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, we Even give the with DX. To NWO, we give the nod to the horsemen. Everything else is the, DX is a, a strong toss up. And I've given the yes, the, the nod to, to them across the board. Let's keep going, though. This is good. Faces of Fear are a tag team, and, and the answer is no. <laughs> He's counting Jimmy Hart with them, though. Oh, yeah, baby. Well, the, then the answer is definitely no. <laughs> the Alliance to end Hulkamania guy will gamble. Wow. I'm showing you the door. Wow. We are not picking up the Dungeon of Doom. <laughs> not That's here. Hilarious. Um, The man's about to say Paul Roma. Yo. I'm not going to lie, guy. I think Sean might have been – me and Sean had to have a conversation after the show. Sean, I'm going to need you not to mention Paul Roma ever again. Honey. Did I mention Paul Roma? Yeah. No. He said uh, when you brought up Sting, he was like, I know y'all might come at me for this. He was like, you better not say oh, Paul you Roma. Thought I was, you thought I was about to say Paul Roma. No way. Oh, my God. No way. It, it makes me cry now knowing that they were going to try to get Tully back because that's who I was expecting as a kid. I remember yeah. sitting there. I was like, Paul Roma? I guess, you know, Paul Roma, I loved him in Power and Glory, but <laughs> that, 
Uh, so Paul Romo or Death. He is loving the old names. Any version of the Heenan family and all the main eventers. I, you know what? I think the Heenan family had a lot of uh, quantity, too. I, I still think the bloodline is going to be over them just because, he, he, like you said, he had people like Haku. You're putting the Heenan family over the bloodline? Okay. I got to hear that. Know, and you know that I love the bloodline. But you got Ravishing Rick Rude, Mr. Perfect, Andre the freaking Giant, Haku, well, who was the king, the oh, Brain right. Busters, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard. I I, I got to say, I got to give the nod to the, fa- to the family on that one, bro. Oh, that's tough, man. Think but, about it. But, Before you answer, you got to think about it first, bro. Well, time out, though, bro. They were all taking them Hogan leg drops, too. Like, it was nothing. They were, I mean... That's true. Rome is giving the leg drops. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. You're right. I'm, I'm just saying, man, That that's enough. Okay, I'll just put... I'm saying yes, but that's a close one. Uh, let's see here. Sick comes in and says he's, he's got a long one here. Uh, I got to agree. You got to take nostalgia out of it and look at it from a storyline and match quality perspective. As cool as DX was, Bloodline's been knocking it out of the park for almost three years straight, and I can't think of a storyline or top-notch match that included DX. Well, I'm, I guess he's talking about DX 90, 98. Because how- everyone always says that's the better version of DX. No matter Sean being in it and starting it, Everyone associates that version of well, DX with the better version. In that, in that regard, I gotta I gotta agree with Sick with it. I think he makes a good point. Yeah, yeah. Just mid matches and catchphrases. Uh, let's see. Oh, Bullet Club got brought up finally. Oh, I love Bullet Club. I think people give. I, I think people don't give Bullet Club enough credit. I mean, I'm not saying they're NWO level, but. Bullet Club's good, man. The Bullet, they, they Club, the Bullet Club, and I say this with so much respect, I love Adam Cole. I love Finn Balor. I love those guys. But aren't they considered biters? I mean, maybe it was like, like a look, tribute look at, my, look at my face, bro. I even hate to say it, but aren't they biters? But the, is it a tribute act, or is it like, how do you view it, though? Oh my god, that's so good. I mean, they're throwing up the two sweets. When I was a kid, me and my I used to do that to my friends. We do the two sweets like Nash. Of course, of course, me too, but oh, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I would give the nod to the bloodline over over the bullet club. I know that's tough. And we're talking about people like I'm I'm gonna co-sign that. Yes. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna co-sign that. Uh let's see. <laughs> what about double J? Stop it. My world. My favorite version of the horseman is uh Tully Arn Barry, but I love Mongo Benoit Arn. Uh they were entertaining. Flair Wyndham Tully and Double A are the classic horsemen. Aces and eights. Wow. You know what though? I love parts of that storyline and I dislike so hard parts of that storyline. Like you ever been just going on like Twitch or something and then you see like the impact old moments and you just watch for a second. Mm-hmm. I saw one the other day. Bully Ray had so much heat in this cage match, bro. They were throwing beer cans over the top of the cage to hit him and they were getting smacked. The ref covered Jeff like, this isn't your fault, man. It's not your fault, baby. It's not your fault. This is all Bully Ray heat. <laughs> just That's let him get hard. his heat. <laughs> He, they covered him up, man. Uh, yeah, Aces and Eights are taking the L on that. I got, I got a good one for you, bro. I got a good one for you. Who you got? What, what about the Bloodline versus – I got two for you. The Bloodline versus the Corporation and the Bloodline versus the Ministry of Darkness. And matter of fact, three. The Bloodline versus the, the, bloodline versus the Ministry, the Bloodline versus the Corporation, and then the Bloodline versus the Corporate Ministry. We might as well throw the union in there too with the two by no, fours. No, I'm not throwing the union in there. Maybe a two thousand. I'm not going. No, there's three. There was three. There's the, they were together. They were separate. Then they would. Now let's start with this one. Let's start with. Let's start with the bloodline versus the corporation. The corporation was the Rock, Triple H, Shano, Vince at a time. It was Boss Man. It was Viscera. It was Midian. It was the APA. Ken Shamrock. Oh well, that's the corporate ministry, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm combining two. I'm, you're right. So you got Rock, Shane, Triple H, Boss Man, Test. I love Test, bro. But listen, 
they taking the L to the bloodline, all of them. Okay, let's move on then. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. The corporate, I mean, the ministry, first and foremost. The Undertaker, uh, you know what? That's a that's an L too. Undertaker, great. But then it was like Midian, Viscera. Okay, here we go now. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. The corporate ministry, Undertaker, Triple H. Rock was out of it by then, so he doesn't count. But the corporate, or the corporate ministry, Triple H, Undertaker, Bossman, Viscera, Midian, APA, Shamrock before he got kicked out. Where is she? <laughs> when he went to go and get Stephanie, that's Derek's favorite line. I know he's laughing somewhere if he's listening well, to what, this. What do you think, man? I no, no, I'm still going bloodline over them. Okay. Hey, I'm let's, sorry. Kind of, let's kind of rapid fire through the rest of these, bro. Let's see. Sports Entertainment Extreme. I don't even remember who was in it, but I, I know it was TNA, and I'm going to say the bloodline. Yeah, bloodline. Uh, hold on. Sick had a good comment here, I think. Was it about the Shield? If you think about it, DX was just like the Shield. They were good, but everyone blossomed when they were separated. They good even point. became main event stars. That is an excellent point when it good comes point. to the Shield. Excellent. I'm bringing it up. I think also that that's what the beauty of the shield is, though, that they created three main event stars out of those guys. Um, let's see here. The shield impact was crazy, too, on top of all them being faces for the company. Uh, best faction that will rival the bloodline is NWO. They had four. They had the wrestling world in the chokehold for, what, three to four years? Yeah. NWO, yeah. I think we all agree. NWO gets a thumbs up. Uh, New Day gets New brought Day. up here. Oh, this hurts me. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say the bloodline is better, even though I like New Day a whole lot. And you, and you know what? This is based on booking, too, because of how New Day has been treated. Because I love the fact – some people always argue New Day should break up, and I'm always against it. Because I think that those three brothers made a, a pact to stay with each other. And I think that's a beautiful thing because you don't have that in wrestling. Everybody turns on everybody. And I think at a time when that was the cool thing to do, they're showing that they're not selfish, and they can all take a turn, and they can all have a turn. I agree with you completely, bro. Um, let me see here. I I don't know if there was a King of the Mountain faction. I hope that you guys are kidding because I did take some time off of watching Impact for a while. Uh, someone said y'all gonna acknowledge Haku. <laughs> we do acknowledge Haku. Okay, so are we Gamble? I'm calling you out, Gamble. I'm showing you some love and calling you out at the same time. Did ha- what? Give me one good Haku promo. Tongan death grip. That's it, bro. It's like boop, boop. that's not a that's not a promo. All that's you gotta see is the pro promo. bouncing. Let it go. Let him go. The rest pulling his hair. <laughs> he just holds on. Haku's that boy, man. I love Haku. Uh, let me see here. I'm saying this just to be stupid. Never mind the League of Nations. <laughs> nah, they the they take Nations. it that up. That's hilarious. Um, there's a few more. Let me call some of these out, bro. Um, oh, the new blood. No. Okay. No. I think we know the answer to that one. You no. know what? I got one for you from ECW. The triple threat. Shane Douglas, Bam Bam Bigelow, when Rick Rude was the manager with Francine. Are we – I mean, are we talking seriously right now? I thought they were a really good group together, though. They, were, like the they, were, they were excellent. They weren't on the, the level of the bloodline. This is a fact. I'm just bringing it up. I'm just. No, 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 I, I thought you were talking about are they better than the? If you're saying were the were they a great team? They were a great team, but they weren't better than the Bloodline. People got WWE 2K on the brain. Someone said better than Utopia. If you don't know, that's that was William Regal MVP and Umaga <laughs> beat to take over John Cena. The Natural Born Thrillers. You know what? That's a slept on group. I kind of liked them when they were together, but nah. Slept on, but not better. Uh. See hubs, we can agree on ish. Yo, McKinney, we've been, McKinney, we've been agreeing on a lot lately. You're starting to scare me, bro, but I appreciate you. Let's see here. Uh, how many tributes are we going to do, though? NWO bit. Let's see. Bullet Club peak with AJ as the leader. We got Bullet Club. Rob, never again do I want to see this in here. Why is AEW burying all the big guys? I don't know where Ooh. that came from. Got a good Ooh. one at the bottom. That Ooh. was the Undisputed Era? I like the Undisputed Era a lot, but I'm still going to say Bloodline. You know why? Because how much fish could Bobby Fish fry if Bobby Fish could fry, fry fish? fish? Get him out of here. <laughs> Get him out of here. I'm sorry. Undisputed Era is probably the best NXT group of all time, though. Yep. I'll give him that for now. 
Um, right. You know what? I really liked Right to Censor, though, for what they were supposed to be as a heel group. Their song is annoying. I heard it the other day. I think I was talking to E or somebody. It sent me a message, and I heard that song in the background. I was like, Doug, what are you watching? Because I hear Right to Censor's music, and it's so annoying that it catches your ear. They were a good group, but... You know what the funny part is? That music, you don't hear it at first, but there's a beat behind that music, you know? Yeah. Did you ever hear that? Yep. The little doom in the background, but you don't hear it unless you actually listen to the theme. Yeah. Uh, We got some other joke. I I think... I think we all agree that the 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 bloodline has gone. They've ascended into top ten category. Ooh, ooh! I see the one. I think you were talking the Heart Foundation. I would have to. I I wouldn't be able to sleep tonight if I didn't say Heart Foundation. I I will give the nod to the Heart Foundation. I'm gonna go bloodline over them just ooh. slightly. Only because Pillman was he couldn't do too much then. But we knew Bulldog and Anvil were a joke. It was Brett and Owen's show. Like th- those were it the was, two. It was. Games. It was. It Ooh. was. It was a little rough out there. I knew Derek was listening. Where is she? Where is she? <laughs> That's two people brought up the FBI. Rob in Tokyo said the FBI. Uh, good faction, but not top tier. Three MB. <laughs> uh, the ECW version of the Network. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah. So, the, so, we, all, the, so we, all agree, though. we all agree the bloodline is, has become a top five to seven faction of all time. Yeah, I think they're in the top ten from what we were just talking, though. Probably might be top five. I think it might even be safe to say top five for sure. Are they better than DX? Maybe to some horsemen. It sounds like we're still NWO horsemen. Like, nah, you're not touching that yet. But maybe they can get there still. Yeah, I think we agreed that NWO and horsemen are still going to remain top two. DX was always top three. But I think Bloodline and DX is now a toss-up. Interesting way to interesting way to put it, good sir. Yeah, man. Um, I appreciate everybody showing love in the chat. Don't forget, if you haven't, hit that like and subscribe button. And don't forget to leave us a comment afterwards. Uh, yes. Me and Sean always poke our heads in there and hear Pause. y'all in there. What? Pause. What? I didn't say nothing wrong. Yes, Play. Did. <laughs> Play. Now let's get back into this. <laughs> uh, wait. Yo. People really love the brood too. I saw the brood get brought up. The brood had beat music theme too, or was that just gang grub? No, that was the brood, man. They had they had some whoever did that theme, they were feeling it that day. They had the the gang grub walk, the whole the the chalice. Yeah. Um, hold on, okay, stupid. Well, how do y'all feel about the inner circle? Nah, I, I can't put that Jericho the, the group broke up too fast, I think, for that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let me see here. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, Derek. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to our last topic of the night. We're going to switch into a little AE dub for you guys. And a, a, little, and a little bit of and a little bit of seriousness too, because we're about to hit you guys in the head with some some serious talk right now, like some all jokes aside type stuff. Maxwell Jacob Friedman. We could have probably talked about this last week, but we I think we did for a second, but we didn't really harp on it and get into it yeah. too deeply. Yeah. He was in a 60-minute Iron Man match with uh the best in the world, some would say, Brian Danielson. And they had a nice long match. In the very beginning of the match, though, MJF went to the outside and there was a young fan nearby near his mother. Uh he walked past the mother and took her drink out of her hand. Wasn't a lot of liquid in there. I went back and watched this too. It wasn't, people are acting like he dumped a bottle on this kid. Like, relax at the same time. A little bit of drink in there. He threw it on the kid and then hopped back over the gate and then said, Oh, Dave, is that going to cost me a, a star? And uh, got back into the ring. Sean, I'm going to let you pick it up from there. There comes a point when you take things too far. Now, I'm going to start with the outlier, with the possibility that's that's the least likely, okay, that AEW representatives went out to that family and talked to that mother and said, hey, listen, MJF's going to be walking through the crowd. Do you mind if he takes a drink out of your hand and throws it on your son? We'll give you free tickets to a future event. We'll give you money, whatever it takes. Are you cool with it? Now, if that is the case, which I do not think is the case, but if that is the case, then I'm fine with it. They agreed to it. It's A-OK with me. 
But if that was an impromptu, um, organic situation that took place, I think it was inappropriate. I think MJF is taking it too far. I'm all about getting heat. I'm all about being a good heel. I, a lot of people say that I'm a heel on this show compared to Conrad, who's the baby face. But again, I'm not going to let too much lev levity get into this. I want to be very serious. He spit on people. Um, and now he's throwing drinks on kids. Doesn't, doesn't it get to a point where it becomes cheap heat? Like, okay, now what I'm doing is I'm trying to be the biggest a-hole I could possibly be. Not an a-hole on the mic like a like a prime edge. Not an a-hole on the mic like a prime Vince. But just, um, I got to disagree with that, Gamble. I, I appreciate you, bro, but I got to disagree with that. Um, oh, I'm so you're saying Sean. I thought you meant to say MJF was. Yes, I am, I am a heel, like, like old school. That's a compliment. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. But yeah, to stay on focus here, I think MJ, and I'm going to pass it back to you, Conrad, because I sense that you may have a differing opinion, but then again, maybe not. It's wrong if the fans didn't know about it, because I didn't come to get spit on. Unless unless I say this in tongue-in-cheek, unless I am sitting in a WWE event on the first row in front of Triple H when he's doing his entrance, that's the only time I paid to get into a building to get spit on. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's the only time I pay to get spit on is if I sit directly in front of the hard camera in front of Triple H while he's doing his entrance. And even then, I'm probably putting up an umbrella to not get spit on. If it's not a work, I, I'm going to let you have the floor, bro. If it's not a work, and if the, uh, you know, the fan didn't know, the mom didn't know, it's inappropriate. It's too much. I don't think we'll ever know the truth at least not for years to come not until that kid's older we'll never know what really happened similar to the have you ever seen where the million dollar man and the kid who we kicked the basketball from finally met up yes absolutely oh i loved it but the kid didn't know at the time or he forgot and he okay. was crying when mm -hmm. the million dollar man did it and what do you do in that moment ted DiBiase can't be like yeah i can't be like oh i feel bad for you you know what i mean he was like <laughs> and he's laughing in this kid's face he had to dribble the ball 10 times I think MJF, so here's the weird thing. And I've been a victim of MJFs. So I don't know if people know this. I went to do a review on an indie show here in Buffalo, and MJF was on the card. And MJF treated me like garbage before. He was like, nobody cares about your review. Nobody cares about this, this, and this. And when we went there, experience wasn't great. We had a problem with a, a pizza lady, and I was dealing with some other stuff at the time. You know what I mean? I was like, listen, you're like a cafeteria lady. I don't know what you want me to say. But we got some issues, all right? So and you can go back and watch that review. Some unflattering words were said about that, that woman that night. And during all of this, MJF finally has the moment to where people can go up and take pictures with him. Guess who's first in line? Old cue ball right here. I show up and I say, hey, remember me? And he, said, he was like, no, I don't remember you. And I'm like, I'm the guy you were talking crap to on Twitter. And then he was like, oh, oh hey, man, how, how you doing? And then he went right back in the heel mode and started talking his mess again. But I knew he knew. I knew he knew, like, this is how I play the game. And he knew that I was going to be play along as well for it. He was like, come on, cue ball. I don't have all day. Come here. And then, you know, he took, he took like five pictures with me to be cool. MJF knows what he's doing when it comes to that. And I think wrestling fans today, too, are the reason why MJF feels he has to go so hard. I think because they act like, no, nah, I love this dude. He's so cool. And MJF is doing his hardest. He's like, I don't want you to cheer for me. I want you to hate me no matter what I do. And he's trying to become. So I think when you try to do that too hard, it's what you said. You're, you're going to do the most vile thing sometimes, and it's too far. And I think in that situation, it works perfectly. Tony knows what he wants that character to be. So how do you solve it, Sean? There's two ways. Tony Khan's going to be the baby face, make the company look good. But when MJF apologized, did you hear what he said in the media scrum after? I did why not. he did that? I did Someone not. asked him the question, why did you throw the drink on the, the young man that was ringside? Like, what happened with that? What was going on with that? Oh, he, he said he looked, he looked thirsty. He looked thirsty. And I was like, but that was a great response because he still stays the heel. 
Tony and them are the baby face because they gave the kid all the free stuff. He got to meet like Will Hobbs. I saw a bunch of people went over the podcasters like us went over to him and bought him like fingers and all this stuff. Cool. I understand it. Um, but <laughs> I see people in the chat. Talking about forget that pizza lady. So did MJF take it? Listen, if it was my kid or someone else, you might not get lucky like that to get away and hop back over a gate. Someone might have tackled you, did something. Like well, I, was waiting, I was waiting for you to say that because as a as a parent, if he had first of all, let's go back to my original point, which was I thought a very small and shout out to McKinney, I think, said something about being a parent. Um, sick with it. For me, the the chance of my scenario that I talked about when we first started this segment about you going to the parent first and saying, hey, can we do this, that, and the third? That was a theory, but to me, that was a very unlikely theory because if they had come to me and said, hey, can I throw a drink on your kid as part of the show? I'll give you such and such. I would say no. So I'm going to go along the lines of that example that I gave probably didn't happen. And if that didn't happen, that means it was impromptu and the family didn't know about it. So let's focus on that. It's wrong. It's and you guys might want to jump on me for this one. And no, under no circumstances am I saying that MJF should have been arrested or but technically, technically, that's assault. That's assault. But and especially like I've seen him spit his gum on people. And to me, it's like, who the hell do you think you are? This is not wrestling anymore. I paid a ticket for a show. I paid a ticket for a show. You want to get on the mic? You want to run down my town? You want to see me in the crowd? Call me a jerk or a piece of crap? You do what you got to do. You want to curse me? But you are not going to physically do something to me, bro. And to me, that's why I'm saying it got taken too far. And then you got to take it in chat. I want you guys to chime in. It was too far. And then since it is too far, Conrad, my question is, wow. Wow. Are you that limited that you have to go to that route to get heat? Are you running out of material? Would you? Well, I've you've seen him in action, I assume, right? Like at the fan conventions and stuff, even with the people in wheelchairs. MJF does not care. He will. He's going to get a rise out of you no matter what. He wants you to get upset with him. He and he does no, that stuff. I'm, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I want to. I want to talk about the chat. I, I get fired up about these chats because. I think people like Gamble and Positively E have good perspectives, but they're not understanding um, well, the way it went. In 1990, when Mr. Perfect would spit out his gum and throughout the rest of his career, he would spit his gum out of his mouth and hit it with his hand. And yes, it would fall into the crowd. And is there a chance that gum hit somebody in the head? Sure. That's not what MJF is doing. MJF is physically spitting his gum onto someone. Purposely, so for uh, you know, I just wanted I mean, to clarify. That. I mean, I mean, the gum, the gum shot's the same thing though. Too, you're spitting it out. You know, if it's going into a crowd, like, come on, you you know where that's going when you and do I, something I'm sure, like that. I'm sure that's what positively Ian Gamble is saying, which and which makes them probably technically right and me technically wrong. But to me, you don't think the intention's a little bit different. This is true. Derek actually brings up a good point too that I wanted to bring up too. Because here's the other thing. At the AEW shows, they do say when you sit front row, you might become close to the show. So be on the lookout. They say there's dives going to be happening over the gate. If the wrestler asks you to move, please try to move over, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure they're aware of like, okay, if there's someone with a wheelchair sitting here, don't go to that side for the dive, but try to do it in the middle, whatever it may be. So you are there to be part of the show, but not in the aspect of what Sean's saying. Sean's saying that nobody's asking to get a drink thrown on them. And I get it. Sometimes you, uh, those matches in the attitude area, you grab a water from the crowd, then you throw it over your head and everybody's getting wet. I've, I've been there. It, I, yeah, it's not, it's not done with an act where you know they did it on purpose to you and singled you out to do it. So I, I listen. To you is, let me take it a step further, bro. Let me take it a step further. And like I said, I am not this guy, okay? I am not someone that tries to get people in trouble. I am not someone that tries to get unnecessary attention on people. I'm just throwing it out there. If that was not planned, if that mother did not know what was going to happen and having her child have a drink thrown on him, 
my question to you all is, could she have gone to the police and filed the claim? I don't know how far it would have went. I'm, I mean, I'm just asking a simple question, bro. Oh, could she have? Yeah, you can go to the police for anything. But, but okay, would, so I mean, okay, so maybe I should maybe maybe I should, maybe I should make it less simple then. Could she I, have I think, to the, go ahead. No, I was gonna say I think because when you go back and look at the footage, did the kid actually get the water on him? Was he actually wet? I don't know because listen, I'm drinking water right now. And by the way, I don't think MJF knew it was an alcoholic drink either. That's where people started taking it too far to me too. Like, oh, he knew. He didn't know. He grabbed a cup and threw it on the kid. He just, I think like you said, he grabbed it. was like, I'm going to throw water on somebody. Yeah, hate me. Right. So there wasn't this much water in there. If you guys can see the line right there, I'm shaking the water for you. There wasn't that much in there. I don't even think there was this much water in there. It was barely anything in there. But it was a hurtful action that he did to someone who was a kid. And you don't know how that kid might have felt or whatever afterwards. I think they handled the situation the best they could while trying to keep the heat on MJF at the same time. So he got what he wanted. Tony got what he wanted. He took care of a fan. He was like, we're going to have a great time, blah, blah, blah. But it's a situation like you said. I think you want to be careful when you do this because Derek brought up a good thing. ECW. He brought up, don't forget what Bully Ray said. And I only know this because we all talk a lot. Do you remember Bubba Ray Dudley? I can't remember where the show was. ECW was one of the worst nights. They got the worst heat. Bubba Ray got on the microphone and started talking about a mother and a daughter in the front row. Do you remember this? I do. Yikes. That was one of the most like hot like heat I've ever seen somebody get from a crowd. The woman spit on Bubba Ray Dudley. Mm-hmm. I don't know if people remember. A lot of spit talk tonight. Can I, can I interject so, while you finish the story? The mother yeah, spitting ahead. on Bubba Ray Dudley was wrong, by the way. I would say that as well. She was dead wrong. It was inappropriate. Bubba Ray, let me say this, bro, and I want you to finish. Bubba Ray went too far, but it wasn't a physical act. That's what I'm saying. But go ahead. I- well, I think spit is a physical act because she oh, spit oh, on oh, him oh. and then he's Okay, well, no, no. Okay, he was talking crap, really ridiculous, over-the-top, probably inappropriate crap, and then she spat on him, right? Correct. When he got down real close, he got real close in her face. What are you going to do? Because that's oh. what heels do. They poke you all the way. What are you going to do? So okay. the lady spit on him. Well, Bubba Ray, I didn't think he was going to do this. He spit back. And I was like, what is going ECW was a different time, though. They were a different breed. They love being part of the show. So, like I said, it's a mixed bag for for what you're gonna get with that. Uh, while, while, on, I'm gonna get it. While we finish this conversation, and while you about to uh, about to do this um, comment by Sequin, chat, I want you to be as interactive as you've ever been. Did MJF go too far? Yes or no? I want your answers. Did MJF go too far at Revolution? Yes or no? Go ahead. Um, no, I'm just reading what six said. Six said, my mama wouldn't have played that. That would have became a triple threat match. Uh, I, I'm saying, I'm saying, let's see. Juggernaut, what's up, Juggernaut? Appreciate you coming in here, bro. Um, let me see here. But my concern is, is there going to be a time where MJF legitimately goes too far and something happens that makes him and the company look bad? 100%. I think Tony's probably had those conversations with him after this. Like, yo, you got to be careful when you're doing this. Like, don't do something stupid. Uh, and that lady had a purse. My mama used to carry a little shank in her purse. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Mr. Perfect used to do that with the gum. I think it's uh, different every- gamble, but I respect what you're no. saying. <laughs> no, no, I just went back to it too. Yeah, he sure. said the same thing. Uh, let me see. Matt Lopez says, I'm just saying if that was my kid, I would be on the news. Local headline wrestling fan chokes out. I won't say that. D-head heel uh, for throwing a drink on their child. Everything college basketball says, what's up? What's good, man? The March Madness, he is feeling it. Appreciate you guys coming in. Uh, the wild thing, if it wasn't scripted, why did MJF choose that particular kid? I think it was just nearby. It didn't. You know what? He I'm doesn't. Gamble, I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. I don't even think my, my very smart tag team partner, Conrad, picked up on what you're saying. If I'm wrong, Gamble, tell him, tell him I'm wrong. You know where I think Gamble's going with that? Conrad, do you think I know where you think you – I think – Go ahead. I, I It was a black kid. I, I'm not – Oh, I know that. I, but I don't think that was why he did that, though. Okay. I think, number okay. one, I don't think MJF gives a damn about – race because he sticks up for people all the time with okay, that stuff. So they, okay, so that wipes that out. Okay. 
But but what I think happened was the kid wasn't paying attention to him. Did mm. you notice the kid was sitting in a chair kind of like this, like he was probably tired at the pay-per-view? Right. And MJF was like, oh, you're not paying attention to me? Oh, I see you. You're the person who's about to get this. Okay. That's what I think happened. He's like, get up out of your seat and pay attention to me because that's what he wants. Okay. okay. Wrestling is very a simple thing. That's why I think he did it. And uh, as someone who's been to live events, the unspoken rule amongst wrestlers and fans is you can talk as much trash as you want, but as soon as you cross that barricade, it's fair game, and that goes both ways. I wouldn't say that. I think I think as a fan, you got to be careful, too, because the moment you put your hands on them, it's on. That's a fact. It's on. And they, and they might have backup coming. That was Heat Wave 98. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Matt Lopez coming in with the, the town and everything. Uh, yeah, I think he went too far and it wasn't planned. It could have been. If not a plant, yes, but I think it was a plant. So, so people are mixed on that, too. Right. Had it been a teenager or adult, I don't think anyone would have gave two craps about this. Uh, the kids are off limits unless it's a class. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. You got to leave it alone. A real heel would have gave the kid an open shot. I, I think if Danielson would have brought him over, he would have let him do it. Mm-hmm. I think MJF would have took a punch from the kid. Yeah, but I like I like this man. I'm glad we're talking about it because I mean, and maybe maybe he didn't go too far. I just it just made me cringe when I saw it live. I was like, ugh. Uh, what's going on? Uh, let me, I hope I'm saying this right. Wee's Madness 29. What's good? I, I I hope I'm saying that right. I'm saying it kind of in a French French way. The way I read it, like Wee Madness 29. Appreciate you. What about um, you, Conrad? What about you? Did MJF go too far? Yeah, yeah, I think so. With a kid, I think I think you just get you can't do that because I for number one for his safety too. Like like six said, that could have been someone's mama with the shank in the purse. You don't know what they could have had or what she was doing. She was drinking too, if, and since it, we found out later it was an alcoholic beverage. Let me ask, she let was me ask lit. you this. Too. Let me ask you this. MJF. For some reason, the gum thing, the gum thing doesn't resonate as much because gum kind of bounces off you, even though I still think it's disgusting. Let's say MJF spits on you. Conrad, he's, you're sitting front row and MJF spits on you. You jump the rail. Now, of course, security is going to tackle you, right? Yeah. When all the dust settles and all the smoke clears... Do you think you'll be vindicated? After he spit on me? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. oh yeah. No, I'm about to be working there. Easy. <laughs> Easy. Me and Sean about to be the host of the podcast. AEW Unrestricted here with Conrad and Sean. We're about to get paid. There you go. There you go. That's, I'm glad you said that, bro, because that's the key. I don't want to see MJF get in trouble. Do I think MJF's a racist? Do I think MJF wants to hurt children? No and no. But MJF needs to realize what he's doing is wrong and it could be actionable. He made a bad decision on that night. That's all. He he went after someone. Like I said, I think kids are off limits. If he did that to a grown man, I, I think, uh, who said it? McKinney, I think, said it. We, I don't care. Okay. It was a grown man. Right. I, I think if it was me, I would have threw the drink in the air. If I had the same thought going through my head, I would just do it on everybody and say, everybody pay attention to me and get everybody riled up in the area. But that's not what happened. Um, let me see here. Dana Jones, thank you for hopping in. Appreciate you. Six says, now nah, I'm saying unless it's a work, wrestlers and fans need to keep their hands to themselves. Yeah. Look, I ain't trying to get uh, stomped out by a locker room full of buff dudes. But at the same time, me and my bros would have turned up would have been uh, the world peace thing all over. The malice in the palace, it was mm, called. Mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah, you don't do if that. My, 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 my kid is older now, but if my five-year-old, seven-year-old kid was in the crowd and MJF was in the crowd, that's the key, in the crowd, walking by me and took a drink out of my hand and threw it on my kid, and I wasn't aware of it beforehand. And like I said, I would never agree to something like that. So I wouldn't have been agreed. I uh, wouldn't have known it beforehand. It would have been a fight, a real fight in the crowd. My hand said that, that was the other part that worried me. Someone said that she had a, a lot a shot of tequila. I was like, yeah, it's a lot of tequila in that cup. And that's what that was. That was a big cup for an arena. But what they charge these days, I don't know, man. But- um. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what that. Little controversy on Clash of the Podcast this week. Little controversy. 
nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Um, Sean, let the people know what you got going on this week. Very big deal. Hubbard Wrestling Weekly will be covering in print and in podcast the upcoming, it is now official, April 22nd, 2023, Tank Gervonta Davis defending the world championship against Ryan Garcia. It is the most anticipated fight in boxing in 2023, and Hubbard Wrestling will have you covered top, forward, and back ways. It's going to be an amazing pay-per-view, and I'm going to have you covered with multiple articles and multiple podcasts on the road to that fight April 22nd, so look out for that. Of course, subscribe to the Hubbard Wrestling Weekly channel. Of course, check out the merch. If you see something you like, pick it up. Check out EPW's merch. If you like something, pick it up. But most importantly, keep watching every Monday night. And remember, programming note, we will be coming to you at 7.05 next week instead of 6.05, one week only. And then you know what happens after that. We're really digging into WrestleMania season. So see you next week, 7.05. Let's keep the momentum going. Conrad, appreciate you, my G. Appreciate you for uh, for everything pro wrestling, Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. Uh, we are going to be out Peace.